So this is Blake Atwood with faithvillage.com. Today we're talking with Carrie Newhoff, the lead and founding pastor of Connexus Community Church in Barrie, Ontario. That's in Canada. <laughs> he writes a consistently useful ministry leadership blog at carrienewhoff.com, and some of that appears on faithvillage.com, which we're thankful for. He's also authored two books, Leading Change Without Losing It and Parenting Beyond Your Capacity, co-authored with Reggie Joyner. In fact, we're talking with Carrie today as he's in town as part of the Orange Tour, along with Reggie Joyner and a bunch of other smart church leaders. Um, let's go on to another topic that uh, sure. you're passionate about uh, that's evidenced in your writing, um, so all about blogging. So mm -hmm. when and why did you start blogging? Yeah, I actually started blogging um, six years ago, and I started a blog because it was a good communication forum when I was launching Connexus Church, where, where I currently am. And, um, you know, it, it, they always talk about finding your voice, and... Um, it took me a while to find my voice as a writer and, and, and to figure that out. And then, um, like most bloggers, I went through a love-hate relationship with it. And so I would blog, you know, three times a week for a month, and then I'd quit and not go back for a month, and then apologize, and then go back. And I almost shut down the blog two or three times over those uh, number of years. And uh, what, what I decided to do a year ago when I was launching my latest book, Leading Change Without Losing It, um, was I was going to blog because I've read Michael Hyatt's platform and I knew that that was kind of important to it. So um, I just decided to blog and I was really nervous. I was going to run out of material, but um, I just kind of dug in and made a commitment that I was going to do three posts a week. And um, to motivate myself, I set a goal. I just set a traffic goal and it seemed unattainable at the time. Mm -hmm. And so for this year, you know, if I was going to hit X number of page views, that would be a success. And I was super surprised to discover, I think we're at seven times that goal right now like it's just been crazy nice. so now i'm trying to figure out well what does that mean and what's next after that yeah so. well then i that's a good segue to the next question which i don't i don't know if you'll have an answer for but what do you think was the catalyst for that kind of growth you know that's a that's a really good question um because i have a lot of friends in blogging and not everybody sees that kind of traction i mean grace um grace on on god's part i, I don't really know um it's free so it doesn't cost you anything to right to go online. Um, I think, you know, it's, it's a lot of what Michael Hyatt talks about. It's consistency. Yeah. Um, hopefully you have quality content. I don't think people just show up to read stuff that they're not interested in. Mm -hmm. I try to position it from uh, the perspective of, I want to take my experience and my learning. So it all comes out of 18 years of leadership, but I really don't want to angle it because I don't think people are interested in my life. I don't think people are interested in what I think, but I, I try to help. And so uh, I always try to have action points and helpful content. So if I was sitting down with a handful of pastors at lunch and they said, well, what do you do about this? Because I get asked those questions a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I try to make a takeaway and I try to make it about them. And I just love connecting with other leaders. And if, you know, God can use that in some way to help other people, I'm thrilled. So I think if there was a single word that um, maybe describe why the blog has gotten so much traction over the last year it would just be i hope it's helpful mm -hmm. and when it's helpful you know pe people just aren't interested in your life i don't think people are really interested mm -hmm. in my life but i think people are interested in figuring out how to lead better now and uh, if you can provide that real-time help in a way that's authentic and that resonates uh, i think that that is going to pick up traction it's very well said and it is helpful and you can you can know that when you visit Carrie's uh, website because, like, on almost every post, you see that you get hundreds of shares. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so you can tell that people think, "Oh, this is helpful," and both I need this, and I'm pretty sure that you know, so and so needs to read this too. Yeah, and the fun thing about blogging, and I mean, I've talked to other bloggers about this, but you and you must see this too at Faith Village. You just never know what's going to catch on and what doesn't. I'll write a piece that I swear is a masterpiece. You know, my own little confused mind and I'm like oh this is gonna be great and then like my mom doesn't even like it you know <laughs> so it's like oh that's bad and and then you write one that some of my, my my most shared posts are posts I wrote because I had nothing else to write and I had an hour to do it and it's like uh, I don't even want to hit publish and you hit publish and boom it just goes viral and yeah. I don't know so I can't figure that out I can't predict yeah. it yeah, but just the, keep writing, keep writing. Exactly. That's what I was going to say is that you never know what's going to hit. So you just be consistent with producing good content. And then, you know, something's bad. That's right. And don't get too depressed when it doesn't connect. I mean, yeah. you can go through, I had a whole month where traffic just went down and I'm like, oh, now I'm going to quit. And then hmm. I didn't. And literally a month after that month, like 30 days after I was like, uh, do I really want to do this? And am I really going to get up extra early three days a week to do this? Um, 
a post that again I wrote in an hour um, just took off and, and to, I mean in a month it had like 75,000 views on that post which for me in, in my world mm -hmm. is a lot of traffic so uh, and th tens of thousands of Facebook shares and I'm like yeah just don't quit just keep going it's <laughs> <laughs> good advice so do you think all pastors should blog and then <laughs> no, I don't, I don't. Okay. Um, I don't think all pastors should blog. I think you have to like writing. Yeah. Um, I think it really does help connect you to the people you serve. Some of the, the readers I'm most excited about are people who attend our church. And um, interestingly enough, I talked to a leadership coach in the business community. So a couple of business leaders who are not connected with our church, don't attend church, mm -hmm. um, who are reading my blog in in our community and that really excites me that's like an incidental benefit but I think it can give you a connection point and a credibility and, and his comment and this came through my wife was um, I said something to the effect of I just didn't know that leadership could be present in the church in that way because this is what this guy does yeah. you know for a living in the marketplace yeah. every day and so I think it can do that, but you know, you, I'm not a pastoral caregiver. I'm not a social justice person. I mean, I support that stuff. I love it. I give to it. I believe in it. But everybody's got their passions, and you know, I'm I'm deeply passionate about creating a church that unchurched people love to attend, and I am deeply passionate about helping leaders lead better now, mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, I feel that that's a secondary calling that God has placed on my life. So I think it's kind of, that's why I write and that's why I blog and that's why I speak because I want to, want to help leaders get better. And if God can use that in some small way to make a difference in, in, in other leaders lives. Uh, so it's kind of, you know, I'm grateful for that. And then I guess it sort of springs out a calling. Mm -hmm. So, you know, don't try to be something you're not, you know, and, and again, this is another blog post, but like. You know, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, but it's a terrible form of leadership. And you shouldn't try to be the next Andy Stanley or Mark Driscoll or, or whatever, because Andy Stanley didn't try to be somebody else. He was just being him, and for whatever reason, it got traction. You know, Reggie Joyner wasn't trying to be Andy Stanley. He was just trying to be Reggie. And, um, you know, it got a lot of traction with a lot of leaders. And I think if you can find that authentic voice and just who you are, and yeah, you know what, you're probably not going to have 50,000 people go to your church and you might not have 10 million readers, um, but if you can make a difference in somebody's life, that's awesome. And if it's just being in your own community and never blogging, that that's phenomenal. We need people like that. Mm -hmm. So what's your advice for pastors or church leaders that feel like they should start blogging, but mm -hmm. they're scared to or they're hesitant to? Just do it. Like, just yeah. do it. I mean, I... I didn't know, I still don't know code. Um, my blog, if you look at the design, it needs a refresh. My son and I, who's in computer engineering, we put it together. And I just told him, well, I'd like it to look a little bit more like this. And he put it together. It's going to get a major overhaul in the next few months, um, you know, in terms of design and everything. But, you know, you don't, you don't really need a great design. You don't, you don't, you know, if you have a Twitter account, a Facebook account, LinkedIn profile, Google Plus profile, I mean, you can get your message out there, and if it if it gains traction, it gains traction. If not, well, that tells you something, and then you go on to something else that you could do. But just get started and do it and make a commitment. Yeah. For me, setting goals really, really helps, Blake. Yeah. And so I set some goals. Now, I've, you know, this is the end of one year, and I've, I've got to look ahead to the next year, and I've got to figure out, okay, what are my goals that are going to motivate me? Because if I don't have goals, I, I tend to not stick with it. Right. Gotcha. So last question on blogging. Here's a question every blogger probably wants to know. How do you come up with ideas to write about? <laughs> Evernote. I just keep an Evernote file. A couple of things I did. One is um, ideas come to me at the most random times, and it's almost never when you're sitting with your fingers on a keyboard behind a computer. So I have Evernote on my phone, on my iPad, on, on my laptop. And when, I, when I'm in conversations like this, I'll write down ideas right after. Um, questions when I'm speaking to people, like the questions that people ask you again and again, uh, probably there's a reason they ask you that if you can blog on that. Uh, I've also, I also did a reader survey uh, about six months ago and I got like lots of ideas. Mm -hmm. And then I do a new reader survey that I designed a couple months ago. So when you subscribe to my blog, you get um, a request to fill out the survey. And you know, some people do, some people don't, but a lot mm -hmm. of people do. And um, I think I asked the question, um, 
you know, if, if you could get advice on any subject, what would it be? And then I asked, and then open form, like don't okay. bullet list it, but just let people talk. And then there's a second question, which is really just the first question disguised as a different question, which is if you could bring in a leadership consultant or coach, what would you ask him or her to advise you on? And you would think that that would give the same answer. Often it doesn't. Mm. And so you get a whole other treasure trove of ideas. And if you can help people solve, like most of our problems are the same thing. Right. right. So uh, I'm, I'm dealing with stuff that you're dealing with in your church. So if if I can figure out what people are actually struggling with and realize, hey, you know, we dealt with that. And here's how we dealt with that. Or here's how I've seen this guy deal with it. Um, you can really help people. So th that's how I get ideas for the blog. And, you know, the other the other weird part about that is just keep writing. Um, mm -hmm. I found years ago when I was speaking, you know, you'd kind of hang on to these illustrations because I'm always afraid as a speaker, I'm going to have nothing to say. I'm always afraid I won't have any illustrations. And I made a deal with God years ago. I'll use the best illustrations I have and not worry about replenishing the well. I'll leave that to you. And here we are all these years later. I've still got ideas for messages and mm -hmm. series. And you know, now I've got a year of, of stuff cataloged um, for series at Connexus. And same is true with writing. Like writing more generates more ideas for writing more. Right. And... Um, so if you just get at it and you make a, a target of once a week or twice a week, or in my case, three times a week, um, the more you write, the more ideas you have. At least I've found that to be true. Right.